Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show all about the upcoming third person MOBAs out there that us para-refugees actually care about. Uh, what we're going to do this week, we're going to be talking about all the news and updates for the various games that we track and then we're going to head into talking about the poll results for the popularity poll that I do every week. And then our topic for discussion is going to be what happens when there's competition, what when they actually have to compete against each other. So I think that'll be a pretty interesting topic. But uh, if you do want to come and host with us, we do have guest hosts. Just hit me up in the comments or on Discord, whatever. Hit Jelly up if you want to. Just if if it, if you want to come host, come host. That it, it's fine with us. And uh, there'll be um, timestamps in a pinned comment below if you want to just jump around to whatever game that you prefer. All right. So now let's get to the introductions. I. I'm the Man Goose. Joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host for both Enter the Ether and for the Minions, Jelly Knees. What's up, Man Goose? I thought for sure with the intro, you were going to say welcome to Enter the Ether, and we were going to have to start this whole thing over again. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I, like had that moment. I was like, oh, he's going to mess it up. I almost do it every <laughs> single time. I have no doubt. With the almost identical intros, it makes sense to me. But I'm doing great. With us, though, we have Devil's Spawn. Welcome, Devil's Spawn. Uh, kind you. of... Give us a rundown of your experience with Paragon, what got you into it, the whole nine yards. Um, so I was in the very first, uh, one of the very first, um, like, the first alpha of uh, Paragon, uh, way back when we had the Legacy map. Um, I was always a um, ADC main. Uh, my favorite was Murdoch, personally, but then I switched to Twin Blast and everything. Um, Twin Blast actually became my overall main. Uh, but then I went into Monolith and everything. Um, and when Monolith was super big, um, I actually was in one of the small tournaments that they had uh, for it. Um, I was on one of the hardwired teams. Uh, so that was really fun to do. Uh, that's actually where the my Discord um, picture comes from. That We all had uh, this picture with d in different colors. Um, okay. And we all nicknamed ourselves um, like Greek gods because it's um, it's the Titan. This is the picture of the Titan holding up the world, which mm -hmm. I'm forgetting his name. Um, but and yeah, so uh, and then once version 42 hit, I was like, you know what? I'm done with Paragon for now. <laughs> so I'm going to go play. And then I just lost it, started playing League. Heroes of the Storm until Heroes of the Storm really like died out. So yeah, <laughs> you're like me, a like... sucker for dying games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like all ADC mains at one point were like, yeah, I mained Murdoch, right? Like it's not, <laughs> there's no consistency um, like that with Sparrow, Twin Blast, or any of the uh, then further on releases. So but all ADCs are like, yeah, at one point I mained Murdoch. Like it just yeah. is a thing. So in Legacy, I always mained Murdoch. Um, but then when we switched to Monolith, uh, Twin Blast was really strong. And then when they came out with the rogue skin for Sparrow, that was my favorite skin, skin That's line. Skin. Um, so that was actually the other for the minions that we, that I was with Mangoose. Um, or Mangu. um, we were talking about skins and the rogue made me switch to Sparrow. <laughs> Maybe like just main her straight for like a month. It was great. Dude, those rogue skins I, were my, one of my favorite skin lines, probably. For being yeah. as simple as they were, they Ooh. were really clean and aesthetic across the board. Exactly. Well, speaking of skins, of let, let's get into the news and updates, because we have some exclusive skins from Overprime. We're going to start with Overprime this week, because a lot of stuff coming out of Overprime. And they gave me exclusive content, so they get bumped to the front of the line. <laughs> Let that be a right. lesson to the rest of the companies. Give me some exclusive comment. You get to go first. <laughs> Exactly. I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up. Ethereal, Ethereal next week coming first. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I hope they come first. <laughs> now, uh, aside from, we'll, we'll get to those images here in a minute, but uh, the big news coming out of them was their Steam, they're, they're on Steam. Like, they have a Steam page. Uh, you can't buy it, of course. You can't play it, but you can put it to your on your wish list. And they had this competition where if you record yourself putting Steam uh, over prime on your wish list and post it as a YouTube short and tag them. It would, um, they get, you get $10 just automatically. You get $10 of in-game currency. And then like, I think the top 20, 
most liked ones are going to get something special that we don't even know about. We don't know what it is. So I thought this was a genius marketing move. Apparently it's something that happens um, in the Eastern market a lot, but I had never heard of doing this. Uh, no. Jelly, what did what did you think of this? When you when I first saw your video, I was like, why is he making this weird short about the overprime? Which too. was like, what are we doing? Then you explained it and I went like, that's brilliant. Like that's a yeah. whole concept I had never considered before to just instantaneously get your name out there and give for basically no cost, right? Yes, technically there's production cost that goes into making the skins that people are going to buy with that currency. But for giving away $10 of that premium currency costs you nothing. And you get instant exposure from all the people that do it. Brilliant move. Absolutely brilliant. There's layers to it. Devil Spawn, what did you think of it? Um, so, uh, th same thing with Jelly. I was like, why is Bad News posting a 30 second video? <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, and then now that you explained it here, um, it's brilliant. And also, like, um, now they could release a lot of, um, because I'm pretty sure Overprime had the biggest roster, if I'm remembering correctly. At one point in time, they did, yeah. Um, but if you think about it, if they give the ten dollars worth, a lot of people can buy, you know, the champions they really like right mm -hmm. out of the get-go and play those ones that they like too, because they'll have that premium currency as well. And they arguably have the biggest, from what we've seen the biggest skin selection of non Paragon skins, or at least they will very shortly here because okay. they're, we've already seen so many of their skin concepts or renderings or all that, mm -hmm. that even if they were to do something like fault does where you can earn the Paragon skins for free, their skins would then be able to be purchasable, but with this $10 currency. Oh, well, that's really cool. And it's not only their own skins too. They've got their own hero, Adele, that you can see on the website. Mm -hmm. She's got the chain sword and the, and the shield or what have you, you can't really see it on the website. You just see that she's got a kind of a twin pigtail look to her. Kind of a bit of a Harley Quinn sort of look. Ah, she's just Yin and Terra combined, I'm convinced. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Yin and Terra with some Harley Quinn aesthetics. Yep. I like it. Throw in Shinbi's coloring to Yin and Terra, and then we've got it. It's all thrown together. <laughs> Quite the mashup I figured there. it out. Where's are we gonna throw like I, I'm back? Are we gonna, are we gonna <laughs> throw like rampage in there or something? Just just to throw everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> just just his uh his tank top skin. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. But uh, okay. Speaking of skins, is this is the exclusive stuff they sent us? They sent us a skin for Countess and a skin for Narbash. Now the Countess skin looks a lot like the Red Hex skin that she used to have. But I looked mm -hmm. at the Red Hex skin, I looked at this skin. This skin has a lot more different gradients and shades to it. It's a fairly basic skin. It's definitely not like a tier three skin, but it's also definitely a skin they made themselves. It's not, they did all the work on this. It's not one of the unreleased skins from, 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 uh, from Paragon. So what'd you guys think of the Countess skin? Uh, Devils, I'll let you go first. Um. I really like the colors. Um, it's definitely like more of a like for instance the the silvery um, uh, silver like it looks like an armored countess, which is really cool, like an armored assassin, uh, which I really like the uh, basically the whole aesthetic they're going for. And then the blades, the blades look really cool with the whole orange and red aesthetic there. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the skin for a, what's probably going to be like a tier one level skin, is super good. The gradient on it is really nice. It changes her base model enough that it feels different from just base Countess in, in almost entirely. I just think it looks great across the board. Yeah. And then the other one they gave us was for Narbash. This one was, had a lot more differences, I think, because he's mm -hmm. got like this sort of Aztec tribal feel for him. He's got these like tribal tattoos all over him. He's got white hair. It's like a, I think there's a few little differences to his drums and stuff. I, being a support main, I love it. I absolutely love this skin. I think it's awesome. It's kind of like the Mayan skin for Steel, but for Narbash. Uh, Jelly, what'd you think of the Narbash skin? That's actually a great association I didn't make is like the Mayan skin. Um, but I love this skin too. It, like if I was going to pick a tier one for Narbash, this would be up there because I love... He's a different shade of green. I love the tattoos that he's got around him. 
his drums have like the sun on them. I think it's a really cool skin across the board. Devil Spawn, your thoughts? Um, so the last time I was on this, actually, the Doomsday skin is actually one of my least favorite skins for Steel. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? But yeah, um, even though that was one of the Paragon's first like legendary skins. Yeah. But um, for Narbash, I actually really like um, this aesthetic. I really like the the green with like the blue offset. It actually looks really good, and then the tattoos like. I, I like this one, um, but I wasn't feeling the my the Doomsday skin from Steel. But this one looks really cool. So something I'm noticing actually between the two images is this isn't even just like a static backdrop. They've actually picked two different locations theoretically on their map that they're using That's as true. backdrops for these skins and doing custom lighting on both. Because the lighting's different, the backdrop is different. They're actually they're putting more effort into these than just throwing them on a generic backdrop and calling it a day. I definitely think it's on their map too. I do too. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, really cool stuff. Um, glad to see Overprime pumping all this stuff out. As far as like themes go, like you were talking about, like the rogues, the rogue skins, like the rogue Kalari mm -hmm. and the rogue Sparrow. The only mm -hmm. theme I've really seen from them was is kind of the steampunk thing. They had, they yeah. had the steampunk uh, howitzer, and they had a steam another steampunk skin. I think it was maybe for Murdoch. I'm not sure. I'd have to and look back. I think steampunk is an easy avenue to go. That is yeah for skins. Yeah. pretty much universally liked across the world it's a skin line that you can put out that almost everyone is going to have some interest in uh, uh, universally not some people will of course dislike the skin but that's just the nature of skins as long as it's done yeah. well yeah but if you're doing a skin yeah. line i feel like that's a safe one to start with and then it also like has so many different avenues that they could go like steampunk means a lot of different things mm -hmm. uh, not just like mechanics or so a lot of top yeah. hats from what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from what I know of steampunk. I love it. Perfect. Just going to throw top hats on everything. So let's move on now to Ethereal. Jelly needs his baby. And Devil Spawn's baby a little bit too from what I understand. Um, so Jelly Knees, you did... Th this is a post from you in their Discord. The frequently asked questions for the stress test... I think that's a great idea to post this because I know people have been asking me all kinds of questions about the stress. <laughs> When's it going to come out? When, when do I get the email? What well, it could all be answered if you just go to their Discord and read what the Jelly Knees has for you. It's Jelly, okay, you want to talk? Post anyway. You want to talk? I, I think people read this. I read this one. Wow, Mangoose actually read a post for me. <laughs> Look I'm, at that. I'm feeling good today, then. <laughs> Dude, Jelly, you leveled up. You got mad. I know, seriously, <laughs> man. I'm I'm established now. <laughs> just put it on my resume. Your man goose my post. Thank you. All right. I was uh, glad no, you yeah, did it. Because, you, I think it was huge. It's funny that I you say that you were getting a bunch of questions because honestly, I somehow was the one not getting questions about it. And Most people would ask like answer. somebody else, and then it would come to me via that <laughs> that intermediary person. It's like I've made every post for the last <laughs> month. Why are people not messaging me or adding me? Whatever. I'll take it. Uh, but FAQ went out, so the stress test starts at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, and it will either run till it breaks or run until 9 p.m. on Sunday. So it's going to be a whichever comes first. We're hoping that the one that comes first is it runs up to 9 p.m. on Sunday, because um, that would be great to give essentially two full days of play yeah. to everybody that, that can get in. And we're just going to go from there and see how it goes. We yeah. put system specs out there. The system specs are rather low. Um, they're slightly higher than what Paragon required, but just by a hair. Yeah. And we're working every day to optimize it to get it down to at least those specs, if not even lower, if, if at all possible. But system specs are on there. Play times are on there. How to get access is on there. All those good things. And if you're watching uh, this right now, that's tomorrow. That, mm -hmm. So, yeah, because this comes out uh, Friday now. Devil Spawn, so, you you hosted ETE or uh, you know, for the minions. I, can, I, yeah. I did it. I did it. <laughs> you hosted for the minions a long time ago, and you were really interested in Ethereal specifically back then. What do you think of it now? Um. So with Ethereal, um, back then I was like super hyped for it. I loved that it was a different IP, different game. Um, I loved that you know the lanes were stacked on top of each other um that's what i like 
I was like, whoa, wait, this is gonna what, hold what hold up. Um, but now that like they're there's still that super verticality stuff, but now that like for instance, from one lane as I was seeing someone from the play, you can see both like islands in the sky, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um I'm actually really excited. Like, um I saw the gameplay of Iran, I believe it was. Um the yeah i was really uh, i've loved all of the gameplay for it <laughs> i'm really excited to play uh, as you know the carry main um for paragon i'm really excited to play dante um and then <laughs> i'm also really excited just to play in general the item store seems really cool um the six items and then your boots mm-hmm. is also really like for instance league of legends is the main one i play it only has six items and your boots is one of those items. Um, so I'm just really super excited to finally, like, I really hope I get in the stress test because that'll be, um, uh, it'll suck if I don't. And also, I just want to try and break the game because that's the whole goal <laughs> of the thing. Because <laughs> I was, that in... is the goal, like, 100%. <laughs> if you can do it, great. But I um, hope you can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably not going to, but like, for instance, uh, predecessor stress test. We broke it within, like, a day. <laughs> um, and I would love to give them, like, all of that info and all of that, like, knowledge of the stress test. So I'm ready to play. Awesome. Jelly, I cut you off earlier, and I apologize. <laughs> you seemed like you were about to say something before I started talking to Devil's Oh, uh, You know, just that Mangoose is bad at Ethereal. Jelly needs is the best. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the normal it. stuff. The normal <laughs> stuff. Oh, okay, so if I, if I play, I have to beat Jelly is what you're saying dude i feel like i'm gonna get mobbed so hard in my games yeah. it's gonna be ridiculous yeah you dude, are we're gonna have bad to use my and jelly. And not be jelly <laughs> <from the stress. laughs> you're gonna be on that elusive malaya more than likely to those so. i'll have to be because i can't play anybody else and get mobbed <laughs> oh so what you're saying is i have to watch the sky to kill jelly maybe Got well it. you need to watch <laughs> cliffs and stuff malaya can't fly but she can oh totally mixing up the characters yeah that's Leah wow. you're thinking of it's Leah, Leah. yeah I'm t- totally in the comments I'm gonna be like that's Leah what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. right let's move on speaking of predecessor and their stress test they've partnered up with a uh, Excel bite it's a back-end support service like um like a third-party back-end service and I you know I said it before I, I don't think that their servers were actually stressed during that stress test. Just something went on with their MMR where people just weren't getting put in matches. Because people that did get into matches, the, there was no rubber banding. This You know, it didn't crash. They just, they played out their games and had fun, but then they just weren't able to get into any more matches. And anybody else that tried to queue in weren't able to get in the matches. So it was definitely something to do with their back end and not their servers which uh, apparently they learned from it because they're spending a little bit of money on fire on hiring a third-party service which i think is a great idea on their part um devil spawn you, sounds like you uh you tried to get in on that D- did you get some games in of predecessor during the stress test um for the second stress test i think i got a total of two games like two actual games but then mm-hmm. there was a lot of like um where i would get in a game and they would drop or I would, um, or I'd get in a game and people would be like, I want my rule. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then they would just <laughs> drop because of that. Um, because people just want to play their favorite Paragon people. Um, I always was like a filler whenever I would just like try and play the game. Uh, but I got two games in and overall I enjoyed it. So, yeah. That's a great game. I'm yeah, really, really, I'm really good. happy they learned their lesson and uh, hire these because i mean you don't have to hire a company to do your back end but and it and it's i'm not saying necessarily that you have to be part of a big company in order to know how to do back end but you definitely know that they know what they're doing so it's a pretty safe bet to partner up with excel bite um it definitely also shows that like they're willing to get help they're not just like our team knows how to do everything. They're willing to like mm, good point. reach out to others to get that help that they maybe aren't specialized in. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where 
clearly their back end didn't hold up. And so at what at what point do you look at it and say like let's find somebody who's done this before for big projects and use them to help make sure that our back end is solid because our game is solid. Right? It's just the facilitator to get into that that part that they know is good that we agree is all it feels really good and is fun to play and all those things. And Excel Byte they're not like um they're they're a fairly new company but they were founded by industry veterans. It's not like they're a new company that with a bunch of rookies that like they know, they know <laughs> what they're doing. So, yeah. I mean, for backend support, it's going to cover like matchmaking. It's going to cover the cross platform thing. Um, the creation of accounts. Uh, maybe these, these guys might make their um, launcher for them. I don't know, but it covers a whole spectrum of things. And it's also going to give them access to analytics, which I think is pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, like, you, you have like you have the community's perception of a hero and then you have the actual win rate of the hero yeah <laughs> like i, I think because... countess or kalari i think was a great example in paragon mm -hmm. hugely oppressive hero to play against and it felt like you were just getting dominated by her but you could have a kalari go 36 and 0 and still lose the match because they're just doing kalari things the entire time instead of pushing a tower so you look and... at those kind of metrics and see Clary's at 50% win rate. She's fine. You don't really need to do anything to her. Yeah. yeah. And that's Kalari for the longest time was in that state where she was feast or famine and was in that, that win rate. But when she was feast, you felt like she was dominating and needed nerfs. When she was famine, you realized that she was actually balanced and decided to <laughs> just be bad that game, whatever it was. Uh, so uh, those analytics are huge. That's something yeah. That, and I know with Ethereal, we've been talking about for the stress test, is making sure that our back end is set up to get those analytics so that we can see the, all the information that comes through and gauge that way as well, in addition to what we've been doing in testing and all of those other things. So it's it's absolutely a huge resource to have set up and ready for you. Right. Um, also, like, you mentioned, like, Kalari and everything. A lot of the champions, for like instance... Um, another one of the MOBAs that I keep mentioning, like League of Legends, there's some champions in there um, that you definitely know when you have a really, uh, like the analytics might not show this, but the community knows, um, where you know when you have a good one versus a bad one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and definitely the, the analytics might show, oh, this character has a 51% win rate. Let's look at how we would adjust that. And the community perception might be completely different. So analytics are definitely very important there. I think the thing for me about this, this announcement that Pred is partnered with Excel Byte is that that stress test took place on July 30th. And we're just hearing about this in November. Yeah. That that's, seems, a long time. that's a long time to go with no real update to your community to then four months later announced, by the way, we've partnered with people that are going to handle it for us. Like, <laughs> what? What? That's kind of just a weird... It yeah. feels like we should have gotten more information than just four months later we did something about it. Yeah. Um, I also agree there. And it feels like... Um, sorry. With the predecessor, if they would have announced, hey, we're partnering with this back end and we're looking into doing another stress test if they would have like presented it that way different pre presentation i think it would have my perception of it would have probably been different with the whole thing i think it's kind of the way they operate now they used to be very like overly transparent with the community then after their first alpha kind of took a shit back in 2018 i think it was um they ju they just went dark and that's the way they've been handling things they you know, when they got something big, they'll put it out. But for the most part, they just, they keep their heads down, nug it out and keep working. And then you can, it, it works for them. Like whenever you get to play predecessor, it's so, it's just such a great experience that, uh, I don't, I don't mind this. I don't mind them doing things the way they're doing right now. I don't, I don't think they particularly need to be transparent. They've already kind of established that they're not going to be the way that they used to be. So hundred percent. I think it just is one of those odd feelings. It's not necessarily bad. It's just one of those, like, this just feels off. Like, it feels like we're missing right. a piece of something. Mm, um, yeah. And similar similar to with their response to the stress test going poorly, 
their response was just kind of like, yep, it went bad. And that was it. And so it was just kind of like, there's, you're missing, yep. like there, there's something missing. It's not that I want more information. It feels like you're withholding information. And I think yeah. there's a difference there that it's, it's not a want. It's a like, there, there's more that needs to be shared than just that. And I think the fact that the stress, the way people have talked about that stress test has held as long as it has is part of that as well. In that not giving slightly more information means that nobody has any kind of response to saying, well, their, their stress test was bad. And what no, what can anybody say to that? The, yep, right. it was. Like that's, they didn't do anything to do damage control from that front. Yeah. It was just like the last time I played predecessor, I couldn't play predecessor. That's all we have to say. Yeah. So it's just a little, it's a little, like I said, it's, it feels like information is being withheld more so than it's wanting more information. I get that. I feel that a little bit, a little bit. Uh, speaking of just gobs and loads of information, let's move on to <laughs> Fault, who had absolutely nothing this week. No, Good still, old fault. still no patch 14. They didn't announce anything. There was, I, I didn't see anything in their little Twitter feed or, or any of that. I, I got nothing for Fault. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I guess we can talk about them Which... a little bit. I think, and we've mentioned this a hundred times at this point, Mangoose, putting out nothing, putting out nothing was, is such a bad idea, mm -hmm. right? Like that they, even if they're not going to do patch 14 thing, patch 14 itself, they've been putting out like, here's a map tease. Here's this tease. Here's something else. Here's something else. And then this week they just do nothing. Like that right. just doesn't make any, that's so counterproductive to what they've been doing that it just seems off. Yeah, it, it kills the hype that you like you had with the teasers. Like, just be like, "Hey, be on the lookout for next tomorrow's reveal or whatever." Like, just the hint of information is always really cool. They, they hyped it too early. I feel with patch 100%. fourteen, I feel like we were going up a roller coaster when they when they first started that fourteen, and everybody's like getting ready, getting ready for the drop, and then the roller coaster broke down at the top, and now you're just sitting here, like, are we gonna are we gonna do the thing where we put our hands up and, and drop down and, <laughs> and our stomachs flip? I think, no, is that I we're think not, at this we're not point, do that? we're in the loop upside down when it stops. We're not even we're not even we're at like, the top of the ramp. We're just we're holding on for dear life, upside down, going like, okay, any any time now. Mangoose, I would love if you flipped me upside down right now. Same okay, editing. you got it. You um, got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels like they, not only did they hype it up, then they were like, yeah, it's coming. It's going to be this great thing. And then nothing. nothing. And then they said like, oh, no post this week. No post this week. Then they started doing teasers and now we got nothing. And it's just like, what? Where are we going like, here? Decide like, decide your you direction. There's no consistency in what's going on. If you're going to do teasers, do teasers. If you're going to say no weekly post until patch 14, don't do weekly post until patch 14. Just pick one. Like, just <laughs> stop yeah. yanking everybody back and forth with what you're doing. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can flip me right side up again this, now. now. <laughs> okay, oh, we right. can't now? <laughs> <laughs> so, Devil Spawn, um, just your overall impressions of Fault since we got you here. Mm -hmm. Um. So... Overall, so I played, um, I think this was right after, I was having the Paragon itch because this was right after the first alpha of Predecessor, so I wanted to play more. And faults, like, for instance, graphics, so the looks of a game is really important to me when a game is really new, um, and fault just didn't cut it. I played, like, two games. There was no icons for items. There was no... Steel looked really bad. <laughs> um, like, supports my sub-role, like, in third person. Um, and I was like, this is awful. I don't want to play this. So I played two games and haven't touched it since. I think it's a story for a lot of people. They mm -hmm. yeah, got a bad taste in their mouth at the beginning and just didn't come back to it. It was unfortunate for Strange Matter, but that's it happens. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I'm still in their Discord though, so I still get like, "Hey, here's a here's a release." I'm like, okay, <laughs> just hoping for something cool. <laughs> uh, that's gonna close it out for the news and updates. Speaking of the popularity of these games, the popularity poll. We got a uh, 
Got a slight shift in it, predecessor down to 54. I mean, they're still dominating with over half the uh, half For the sure. chart. Yeah. Uh, Ethereal up to 22. Uh, Fault Woo! up to 12, and Overprime staying strong at 12. I think uh, I think the Overprime is probably going to start taking off as we go. Ethereal as well after the uh, stress test. Um, Pred, if they don't release something soon, they're just going to keep slipping down. And Fault, nobody's going to give a fuck about unless they release patch 14 sometime yeah in the near future <laughs> i think depending on the stress test um next week we might see ethereal take like if predecessor oh, doesn't release jump. anything yeah. ethereal will see a real big jump and that's that's the interesting thing in me with me mangoose in these polls in the couple weeks that we've been doing this show again is predecessor has been steadily declining and everything else has been steadily increasing Right. And I think and that shows evidently in the communities as well, right? Like that you're seeing Ethereal pick up, you're seeing Overprime pick up, you're seeing even Fault with the patch 14 weirdness still kind of improving over time and Pred slowly but surely losing numbers. Even after they announced they're partner partnering with a back end, they still lost numbers, right? So it's that an announcement is not enough anymore for them. It's, it's there's actual results that have to be seen for their community to be backing with them over something else. But again, they still have. Oh, for sure. The largest share of the community. Like most people are are are, are more hyped for Pred than anything else. Right. But uh, I think it would take a lot for them to slip slip below that. But uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Only five percent. <laughs> <laughs> well, four percent. But yeah, five percent to go to forty nine. Yeah. Yeah. I know math. Yeah, Mangoose knows the math, guys. By the way, making this fucking pie chart is like the hardest thing I've ever done in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to make this thing? I it's not that hard actually... anymore now that I figured it out. But <laughs> go, If you're a Photoshop guy, go try to make a pie chart right now. Go try to make that pie chart. See how it works out for you. Someone's going to link you to like makeapiechart.com. And it's just going to be yeah, way You can do story. that, but it doesn't look good. That's the way I used to uh -huh. do it. Your mangoes, uh huh? Whatever I used you to just saying. do them in Excel. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, let's that that's going to close it out for the popularity poll. This is going to be a pretty interesting discussion, I think. We're talk we're going to talk about what's going to happen when they actually have to compete against each other, because the question a question I get asked a lot is people asking me, is it is it worth it to buy fault right now or should I just wait for a predecessor or is it, mm -hmm. or should I just wait for Overprime or whatever? I, I'm so uncomfortable telling people what mm. to do with their money to begin with. But like what, I, what I would say is that I spent $20. I've played the game for over 400 hours. I think over 400 hours of entertainment is well worth $20, but I don't know if you drop the twenty dollars now, if Overprime's going to come out next month, and then you're going to be playing that, or if predecessors right. come out, you're going to be playing that. I have no idea how much time you're going to be spending in fault. I. And so it's almost with these pair, these successors specifically, it's almost that concept of like trying to convince your friend to buy a video game. They finally buy it, and then you switch video games, right? Like yeah. it's that concept on a much grander scale. Oh, and I don't want to do that to people. You're, yeah. you're essentially the same game coming out in similar timings so great you pick up fault like you said overprime comes out predecessor drops and then suddenly everyone shifts over and now you're the one guy playing fault congrats yeah. like what it's such a hard dilemma to have to deal with for sure a uh, devil spawn do you think that they're all going to have a paid early access because they've all said that they want to be free to play upon full release but they've all but ethereal has said up front that they're going to be a paid early access they were cut and dry about that from the beginning which i appreciate because you just, you, you know, we, we've known forever that Ethereal, you're going to have to pay to get We may not have access. had the game, but we've known we're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think, I honestly think, yes, um, that early access is going to be um, a paid version. Because there has to be some kind of money. Because all of these four teams, except Fault, because it's been out for a while, they all have been working without money except you know pred because they got the epic thing but they all are working for free in a sense and they want to recoup that money that you know lost in a sense. so i think it will 
Uh, the only Paragon one that I did, think, so. The only one that I think will go free to play first or, or without charging people is Overprime. Possibly. And because they have already been the free to play model this whole time. That right? Makes that sense. they've you haven't had to pay to access their game before. So the community that they have developed in that right, it'll feel terrible to have them suddenly have to pay for it that have put in hundreds of hours into that game already. And at the same time, they are, I would argue, in a more complete state than any of the others at the same uh, by the same token. Um, their Steam release says releasing soon or something along the lines under the release date. It doesn't say early access soon. And Steam, or whatever the differentiation is, Steam has that differentiation of entering early access soon versus a full release soon. Mm. And theirs doesn't say that. Theirs doesn't have that distinction. So I could definitely see them going free to play from the jump, especially because they have so many of those skins already ready to go. And because they did that thing where you get $10 of in-game currency, they're trying to get you to spend money on the in-game store. If they were going to do paid access, they wouldn't need to do that because you're going to spend yeah. money to get in anyway. And, and they have the, the backing of Netmarble, so mm -hmm. it's not as big of a a risk for them to go free to play out the get go. What were you going to say, Devil Spawn? I was going to say their roster, because they have such a big roster, it will draw, say, for instance, if Predecessor doesn't have um, a Kalari, the Kalari in the game yet, for example, um, the Kalari mains that want to play Kalari will go over to, say, either Overprime or Fault. Uh, same thing with like Wukong, some Wukong memes or whatever. Um, so on their website, including their proprietary character, they have 13 characters. 13. Okay. Um, I thought they had more, but. Um, Though they like definitely it. have more because they've been playable in the past. Oh, okay. Listed on their website, they only have 13. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I think the. I agree with Jelly, the. Free to play model is probably going to be them. Uh, if, if they if they come out free to play, they're going to blow fault out of the water. Oh know? yeah, because like blow I, fault. Like I, what I led this in with, if somebody asked me, is fault worth it, or should I wait for overprime? If overprime's free, then I would be insane not to tell them. You know, try overprime first, and then try if you don't out. if you don't like it, then maybe spend your money on fault. You know, mm -hmm. right. But and that Overprime's going to be so different, though, that there's probably going to be a lot of people that don't like it because it's going to be a much faster game than even mm -hmm. late version Paragon was. So, I mean, that's the risk they're taking. But if it's free and people can just play their, their favorite hero, then they're probably just going to gravitate towards Overprime. But, I mean, we don't know if it's going to be free. We have no idea. Yeah. All right. Um, that's really going to be the interesting thing to see is Theoretically, Overprime is going to come out before Predecessor. So we're going to see Overprime and Fault in the space at the same time. So then, yes, yeah, the recommendation, if Overprime is free to play, try that. If you don't like it, try Fault. Then if Predecessor comes out, and if Predecessor is at the same barrier to entry as Fault is at $20, I don't see many people saying to try Fault over Pred if you're going in order of games to try based right. on cost. Right. right. Just based on feel, production value, the whole nine yards. I don't think anyone looks at fault and predecessor and says fault over predecessor. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably some, but not many. And the, and the popularity poll shows that mm -hmm. with the way the popularity poll, the, those numbers have been showing me, I think predecessor could have a paid early access and still outperform over prime. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if, again, we're assuming over prime to be free to play it, but if over prime is paid, predecessor paid, faults die. paid, and they're all out at the same time, which one are you going to pay for? Which Fred, one, yep. You know? 100%. And that's, I think the interesting thing, and I wish we could get metrics on this, Mangoose, is seeing what Overprime's numbers are in the East in comparison to per, per Predecessor and Fault. Because I would, I would bet that in the East, Overprime has got a much, much, much bigger following. Right. Partly because of the net marble backing, partly because of the the team behind it in general, but I but the type of game we've already talked about this as well is fits better in the east based on the other games that we see popular in the east that are not as popular here. 
So they predecessor predecessor and fault could really be the Western audience game, and Overprime could be the Eastern audience game, and they could exist separately in that way, though they still technically are competitors with each other. Right. And then Ethereal has its own is like <laughs> its own yeah. completely different thing. So, and that's the hard thing is Ethereal kind of exists outside of the group. It, it'll be a competitor right. in the sense of that they're 3D MOBAs in, in the 3D MOBA space. But yeah. it is not a competitor in that they're using the same assets as two other games. And one is going to inevitably feel better, play better for more people than the other. Well, also, if you think about it, when Paragon was out, Smite was always a competitor with it, even though Smite didn't have a vertical act, the verticality mm -hmm. of anything. So, like... I don't, it's, the thing, like, Ethereal is very different, so they've got that going for them. Mm -hmm. I think Overprime kind of has that going for them, too, because they're going to be a lot different. Like, Fault and Predecessor both say that they want to, you know, pay homage to Paragon, but improve upon it. What is different with Fault than Paragon? What's items. different with Predecessor than Paragon? Items, yeah. It's, it's, it's I, not that much different. No. Yep. Slight balance changes. Um, like they, they got the passives. The majority of the characters are the same. The premise is the same. With Predecessor, the map is basically the same. You've got a mix of Legacy and, and Monolith, essentially. Um, it's They're fighting for the same audience in that regard because they are so similar to their, well, pun intended, predecessor that it's hard for them to navigate away from that anymore and i, I, and that, I think that's the real competition that. that's the ones that i see one of them killing the other one off mm -hmm. that's True. the real competition is between fault and predecessor over prime like you said probably can capture an eastern audience probably can capture a new audience because it's very different from what paragon was ethereal very you know it's its own thing they're they're pulling from league of legends and smite and dota and all kinds of other games not just the paragon fan base but fault and predecessor are pulling strictly from hardcore Paragon, Paragon fans. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're different enough from each other that one can live that, that both can live. One of them's going to yeah. die. One of them's going to just, the player base is going to fall off and die. Yeah. I, they, they got, they got to approach things differently because they, they both, both companies will say, Oh, we don't care what, what they're doing. We're just making our own game. Oh, you fuck us. You gotta it, care. Yeah. You gotta care. I, I mean, I can tell you guys, and I'm sure this is no secret. Ethereal has conversations every time an announcement goes out from any of these other three companies, and Smite included in that, of talking yeah. about like, okay, if if this was the space, right? It kind of it's getting that feeling going of if we're trying to compete with them in this space, what does this do for us? What does this do against us? What is? How does this compare to us? And like you said, we're not even a Paragon successor, right? That That is only amplified further when you're using the same assets, using the same characters, the same abilities, the same overall concept. Right. Yeah, they, they need to... I hate to say this from an ethical, moral point of view, but they need to get a little more cutthroat with mm -hmm. each other. Like, I also of... think, like... Uh, yeah, so I think whichever one dies it would be dumb, like, for instance, whichever one dies, it would be dumb of the other one not to try and pick up those people. Like, for instance, say Predecessor were to die, it would be an amazing move for Fault to be like, hey, we're picking up this developer from Predecessor. Come play our game. For Just for example. Yeah, it would. it'll depend on what the death reason is. Because yeah. if it's a player base thing, they may not need to because they already have the player base, right? Ooh. So it's not a matter of picking up the 15 people from the yeah. other side. Um, I think the biggest thing is Fault really has to do something with this patch 14. Because mm -hmm. yeah. this, there, if big patches, the space between big patches is anything, any indicator for Fault. 13 and 14 are, what, six months apart at this point? six months from when 14 drops i would assume predecessors in early access of some kind and right. overprime it would certainly be in the same boat right so 
they can't wait six months to do major updates if that's what they have to do. They have to be, this has to be the thing that puts them on the map moving forward and garners their player base. Otherwise, I think they're in big, big trouble. Yeah. Their player base is their money. They're all, they're they're completely self funded. They're not they're not backed by anyone like like predecessor is. But again, see that works against predecessor a little bit too because they have to satisfy their investors. They've got to mm -hmm. pay all that money back. Really, not really pay it back, but you know they need to they need to actually generate more revenue. I think than Fault does in order to keep to keep moving on because Fault has right. already established how they're going to move forward and pay their and pay their employees and 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 sustain the game you know predecessor they we don't, we don't really know what's going on there because they do you have that two million dollars of, of backing but they those backers are going to want more than that back they want more than what they put into it back eventually over time they don't i'm not saying that when it releases they want all their money back but you know it's an investment over time they want they're going to want that back and if predecessor isn't doing well they're not gonna they're not gonna be giving them any more money if they're not if they don't see that there's going to be a return on their investment um, and do you guys think that there's any chance that patch 14 for fault pushes it free to play i don't think so they already have the access of like hey pay 20 bucks get our game i th i don't think so not unless Overprime releases their free to play that might push fault to do it well, and that's what I'm thinking is that with Overprime on the horizon and Pred close behind them, Fault has to do something. That's interesting. Maybe and that's why we haven't seen. Exactly. It's, it's been delayed, for lack of a better way to put it, because we haven't gotten it yet. They're clearly they're going to have AI. They're going to have theoretically a new map. They're going to have a new hero. They're going to have the mastery system. They're going to have all of these things that are indicative of a of a. Full game. closer to full release game that they theoretically could push a free to play button at the same time but and they're waiting to see what overprime does exactly you tinfoil hat wearing son of a bitch you've done it That's again me. <laughs> <laughs> um i wanted to ask do we know predecessor's business model like what they're gonna do when they release theoretically skins theoretically okay right. so basically the same thing as league got it full, full release is supposed to be free to play Mm -hmm. but like okay. like we said I don't know about early access I can't imagine that they're going to go free to play for early access I don't think so I mean like we like we've said a million times Paragon itself was not free to play early access you had to buy like a, a basically a, $20, a $20 to $100 I think was the range yeah it yeah. was 20 to 100 and then yeah. um yeah uh, I got the 20 and, and my friends got the 100 yeah. from everything we've seen from Tiger Stripe on the social medias, specifically their subreddit, which is the one I follow mostly, it sounded like it was most likely going to be a paid early access of some kind. Uh, so, but they had also sounded like they were going to release in November. So it's one of those things that we it could maybe they're waiting for Overprime too to tip their hat before. <laughs> Because they, they theoretically could, right? They already pushed this week in their Discord that it, it's not likely to be this year. Or... So if they wait for Overprime to drop in December, they have some time. If you think about it, they also could be... Um, because Ethereal announced their stress test, they could be waiting to not try and compete with Ethereal, per se, for their stress test. Letting everyone, like, test out Ethereal realize like hey they're breaking their game come play ours they could be doing that and just like waiting for someone to make the next move i don't think so purely off the so basis either, but... that their one of their first stress uh, predecessors first stress tests was the same day that fault released oh yeah and okay pred pred pulled people and then the second pred ended then fault had their moment right uh, but okay. though Pred definitely has the... I mean, we see it in the poll. If Pred wanted to steal the limelight from Ethereal or any of these other games, they schedule something on the same day and say, do what now? Do something about yeah, it. Do it. They're, yeah. For lack of a better way to put it, they're the 800-pound gorilla in the room. We all have to respect them. They don't have to respect us. <laughs> right. right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you right now. If... Of course. But if Pred decided that we announced our stress test and Pred was like, we're doing a stress test that day too. 
we would i guarantee you would have had a conversation of, maybe we don't do our stress test that day <laughs> maybe like, we delay it a week <laughs> yeah because that's just a death sentence that's asking you're pushing the 800 pound gorilla and you don't need to just respect their give them their space do it in your own time yeah well, if 14 if, if 14 launched and predecessor had a stress test the same day you better goddamn believe i would be playing that predecessor stress I'm playing test. Pred. oh yeah however 100%. if pred had a stress test and ethereal had a stress test at the same time i'd be playing ethereal I'd be playing Ethereum. Hey! We take those. <laughs> I want to play a... Personally, I want to play a unique IP. I want to play something new. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Pred gives me that old nostalgia. And Ethereal gives me that... I new don't nostalgia. know what I'm walking <laughs> into. Well, I don't know what I'm... Like, I have to learn how to play, for instance, Dante or Leah. Or any of the other um, yeah. champions Absolutely. that you have. Yeah. I envision myself in the future playing Ethereal, either Fault or Pred, one of the two, not both, and maybe Overprime for some quick matches when I just want to I just want to chill out and not really think about it too much. I agree I, there. I uh, would agree with you too, Mangoose, in that same regard. Go ahead, Devil. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, but I agree with there. Um, like for instance, right now, when I'm trying to actually like rank up or play ranked i'm playing league like i'm playing league but when i'm just playing casually i'll go play team fight tag or i'll go play heroes of the storm or whatever um i want that new like itch that i need because third person was definitely the way i wanted to go <laughs> yeah man well uh, we are coming up on an hour so let's uh let's start closing things out uh Devil Spawn, did you have anything else you wanted to say on the topic? Um, just on the topic, like for me personally, competi competition breeds success. So I think it'll push all of the games to be better personally. See, that's my last remarks. Jelly? I completely agree with that concept um, as well. That competition is healthy for all of these games. It'll show who can succeed, who can't, who can keep up, who can't, all of those things. And if any of these games are watching for the minions and want to send us exclusive content, do so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Jelly. You worked that in quite well. No problem. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I just think they need to st stop with the whole I don't care what the other game is doing attitude. They they need mm -hmm. to, if they want their game to survive, they need to compete. They need to be competitive. That's and they need all to I talk to say. Yeah. Not talk. I mean, not talk shit to the other companies, of course. But <laughs> yeah, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's uh, that's gonna start closing things out. Let's move on to plugs. Devil Spawn. Do you have anything to plug? You got a Twitch channel or anything? I don't even. I don't even remember. First, no, I don't have a Twitch channel or anything. I'm just here. Um, you know, I mentioned Mangoose. Mangoose fit me in. Um, and just like he says, you don't need a webcam to be on this show. Uh, just like I don't have one. Um, it's a great experience. What? That's not your face? <laughs> no, it's not my face. <laughs> um, but it's a great experience. And I just, uh, I, I'll probably message Menus again to be on here, you know, in future shows. And I'd be glad to have you. <laughs> Jelly Knees? And to kind of echo a little bit off that real quick. Uh, if you're nervous about sending Mangus a message or my, myself a message, just do it. Right. Like yeah. I was that guy Let's two years ago where I was like, I don't know. I'm going to send Mangus a message and hope he responds. Right. Like, and then now look where I am. Um, so, I mean, whether I regret that or not is a whole different story, <laughs> but that's a whole, that's like I said, <laughs> different thing. <laughs> but send him a message. We'd love to have you guys on the show. Absolutely. As you can see, we razz each other all the time, but uh, for plugs, I have a Twitch channel. I'm doing marvelous Monday at uh, what did I do it this last week? Eight mountain time seven mountain time i do marvelous uh, monday follow my youtube and my twitch <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> all right right on uh oh by the way you said uh the ethereal stress test what time 9 a.m pacific on saturday to 9 p.m pacific on sunday okay assuming it doesn't break first um, one other question for you jelly do you are you going to be live after the stress test to talk about it or are you going to do that in a q and a immediately after um but what we'll, what we'll, we're going to do is we'll have a live community corner the friday following okay. and we'll i'm sure we'll talk a lot about the stress test and what we learned and all those things 
Cool. Right on. Look forward to it. I got nothing to plug. I just appreciate everybody coming out to watch the show. Everybody that's in the comments right now. I'm glad you glad you joined us and thanks for hanging out and talking to us. And I will see you guys next time. I said that weird. You always <laughs> intro, outro weird. What are oh, we yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible at outros. I'm gonna put all this in too. This is all gonna be part of the outro. Flip me upside down again. Yay! We're, all, we're, all just, we're all just weird. It's okay. <laughs> Man goose. Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, and Ferret.